Welcome back to our tier list video for the greatest generals in history. And I'm apparently going to have to go to presentation mode here. And we were leaving off at Mori Motonari. Let's see Wikipedia. Mori Motonari. Okay, so he seemed like another Japanese guy that put him in like maybe B tier. Himu, the Iron Duke of Alba. The Iron. Duke Fernando Alvarez, third Duke of Alva. Hmm. Hey, this guy was actually a really good general. I remember him now. Putting me in, in the S tier. I could merge some of these uh, tiers so that uh, it wouldn't work anyway. Never mind. Bayan uh, from down here, Takeda Shigen, Shingen. This guy supposedly is one of probably the greatest general in Japanese history. Besides Oda Nobunaga, he won the most battles, like out of them, um, the Japanese. And he fought during the feudal Japan period, so Daimyo, the Sengoku period, during the period of civil strife and unrest during the late 15th century. So we're putting this guy in S tier, I mean God tier, because he won so many battles that were very decisive in the making of Japan. This guy is another Japanese, but he doesn't compare with... Oda, just putting him down here. Nobunaga has to go in. I don't know, should I put him in God tier? Because how would I compare Takeda Shingen? Nobunaga versus Takeda Shingen. Yeah. It seems like Shingen was probably the better general, but Oda Nobunaga still deserves to be in the S tier. Totoyo Tomo. There's so many generals here that I'm not familiar with. We had to use Wikipedia. How do you spell that? Toto. Toyotomi. Toyo. Tomi. Hideyoshi, another Japanese samurai during the late Sengoku period. His invasion of Korea makes his... Oh yeah, because his failed invasion of Korea, I believe. It seems like another S-tier general. So many generals on this. My goodness. When you get rid of some of these ones, they're like... Akbar, Akbar the Great, deserves to be in A tier with Babur. He ushered in a golden age and through military expansion and through economic stability in the Mughal Empire. Tokugawa, so we put him here. Alexander Farnese. Still have so many men to go.
Alexander Farnese. Farnese, Duke of Parma. Captured more than 30 towns during French to leave Paris for the Catholics. Okay. He seemed like he was a pretty capable commander. So put him in B. Okay, we still have a lot of people to go. Um, Stanislaw. Stanislaw. He won major battle against Sweden, Muscovy, the Ottomans, and the Tatars. And oh, this was this was he was a commander at this battle. Now I remember, I remember battle of Klishno or Klishino in the Polish Muscovite War. And yeah, he, they were literally outnumbered like three to one, and Stanislaw managed to pull off a victory. That's actually really amazing. We're gonna have to put him in S tier just for that. Michael the Brave, I'm pretty sure I've heard of him. He was the Prince of Wallachia, and he fought off the Ottomans many different times. Just like Michael the Brave. Yeah, he was actually a successful leader because he fought off the Ottomans a bunch of times. And that helped guarantee Romanian freedom eventually in the future. But compared to some of the other people on this list, I can't put him too high. I just have to put him in the A tier, just like some of these other people. Johan Tsurkleis. Johan Tsurkleis, the Count of Italy. He destroyed a Danish army at Lutter, sacked the Protestant city, caused the death of 20,000 people. And he was a commander of the Catholic League's forces during the Thirty Years' War. He had a lot of important victories against... Oh, he's the one that won White Mountain. Yeah. He's a pretty pretty good general. Maybe put him in S tier, actually. He seemed like a pretty strong general. Giancarlo. We haven't even gotten to the Civil War generals yet. That, that's where the good stuff comes in. Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee and Sh Sherman. Jean Carroll. Alright, so commander of the Lithuanian army and participated in the Wallachian campaign, Polish-Swedish war, Polish-Muscovite war. And he died in the front line, but he did Defeat. Oh, the Battle of Kirchlom, yeah. I keep remembering the battles, but I keep on forgetting the guys that were commanding it. Oh, man. he These Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was very underrated. Like, we have commanders beating armies like half, like three times larger than they are. This guy has to go in the S tier. It's just there's so many, like, Euro European generals that these guys often get forgotten. Which is why, like, we have to look them up. But, man. Yeah, like, everyone remembers Poland for getting blitzkrieged in World War II, but they were pr quite a power back then. Quite a contender, actually. Maurice of... I, I'm pretty sure this guy is going to go in the... This guy's an S-tier general. I, I remember him. Ambrogio Spinola. I do not know who that is. Ambroglio? Ambroglio Spinola, first Marquis, nobleman of the Republic of Genoa. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Fought some successful wars in Flanders. I think we'll put him in A tier. Okay, Abbas the Great. 
I've heard of there, I've heard of many people called the Great, but who is Abbas the Great? He's the oh he's a Safavid Safavid king. So he presided over the apex of Iran's military power and came at a throne during the troubled time. He regained possession over some territories in the Middle East and retook back for some land from the Portuguese and the Mughals. Okay, so as a king he was good, but like as a military leader though, I want to see. He did reform the army. War against the Uzbeks and the Ottomans. Let's see Ottoman Safavid War. Okay, the Safavid that's actually won this one under Abbas. Usually the Safavids get beaten, from what I heard. I think Abbas would go in. I don't know, maybe B tier. He's not like as great as some of these people up here, but he's definitely decent. Hmm. Let's see, Elric von Wallenstein. I think that guy is in A tier. Stanislaw Koni. Another Stanislaw, okay. Okay, so he's regard an okay, so there's another Polish Lithuanian guy. He defeated with inferior numbers, he defeated he stopped Gustavus Adolphus, really. Okay. And he defeated a major Ottoman invasion. And the Tatar invasion. This guy was pretty yeah, this guy. He's in S tier. All the Polish Lithuanian guys are all the way up in S tier. They're defeating armies like three times their side. Okay, Gustavus Altofus, he's the ruler of the Swedish Empire, considered by many people to be the father of modern warfare through his implementation of various reforms. I've heard of him. Gustavus. Gustavus Adolphus. Yeah, he's considered one of the greatest commanders, and he. Oh, he was killed at Lutzen, though, but. Yeah, he could have, in an alternate timeline, he could have been, like, probably one of the best generals in history, to be honest. But, we're going to put him all the way up in, I don't know, should, should we put him in God tier, or should we put him in S tier? Because he was one of the greatest generals in history. You know, let, let's just put him in God tier. He deserves it. Next we have Oliver Oliver Cromwell. Too bad like all the generals that they put are all like good ones. Like there are not a lot of bad ones in this list. <sighs> So this guy was the guy that fought Charles the First during the English. Th oh, okay, okay. He's a Puritan. Put him in B tier. Leonard Torstenson. You know we gotta have someone in. S well, whatever. We gotta, we gotta read the Leonard. Torstensen, Swedish Field Marshal. Okay, so he seemed like he was just kind of a backup to some other generals. Put him in like D. We haven't even gotten to. Uh... Hmm. Raimondo Sort of the Habsburg monarchy, the only commander to be equal of the French general Turenne 
linear infantry tactics. Okay, this guy seemed pretty important. Put him in A. Hmm. Vicomte de Turin. Vicomte de Turin. With French general, one of the only six marshals who have been promoted Marshal General of France. Okay. I want to see his battle record, though. Okay, he fought the Eighty Years' War. Oh man, he has quite a few battles. He's killed by a cannonball, though. But so he's regarded as one of the greatest commanders in modern history. Shrug against Bavaria. Defeat the Bavarian army. Okay. Okay. So I think this guy deserves to be up in S tier. Marquise of Montrose. Marquise of Montrose. Did... Which one, though? There's a bunch of them. Is he this guy? No. Uh, we're going to have to look for him. Oh, it's this one. James Graham, the first Marquis of Montrose, fought the Civil War in Scotland. His spectacular victories are remembered by military history for their tactical brilliance. So he fought alongside the Royalists against the Parliament of Scotland, but ended up dying for it. We'll put him in C. C tier. Dorgon. Who is Dorgon? Okay, so... Oh, a Chinese. I haven't seen one of them in a while. The Qing forces occupy Beijing. So he's a guy that was the region of the Qing Empire, and he defeated the Ming in a, mere, a series of battles. Put him in B. Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb. I'm pretty sure I learned about him in history class one time. He was the... Um, Okay, so king of the Mughals, or emperor of the Mughals. And under his emperorship, the Mughals reached their greatest extent. And he was the last effective Mughal ruler, and he was an expansionist. Okay. He's an accomplished military leader, but he's also pretty controversial because he was a good military leader, but not necessarily a benevolent ruler. He did bring an empire to its greatest extent, so we'll give him an A. Hmm. Le Grand Condé. Le Grand Condé. So French general and one of Louis the Fourteenth generals. Okay. He seems like just one of these other European generals, so I'm gotta kinda just put him in C. Because all of these generals were become very familiar with as I found out more and more about them. So, Duke de Luxembourg, I'm guessing. Well, you never. Duke de Lux. Well, 
yeah. Put him in here, E. Jan Sobieski, he was the one that led the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth into the famous Winged Hussars charge against the Ottomans and defeated them, saving pretty much Western Europe. So we gotta put him in S tier. Jan Sobieski. Put this guy in D tier. John Churchill. Churchill. First Duke of Marlborough. Seems like a B tier, solid. Same thing with these couple of guys. Is they're, they're they're all like B tier. Carl Carlos Rex though. Carlos Rex or Charles the Twelfth, the Young King. He was the one that fought against the Russians in the Swedish-Russian Wars, or the. He actually ascended to the throne at a very young age, but he I was he was actually a very successful military leader. I mean, he beat a bunch of Russians. He beat the army of Peter the Great of Russia a couple times, actually, even when the Russian army was multiple times larger than his. So Charles the Twelfth of Sweden, or Carolus Rex as they call him, we're gonna put you in the S tier. Von Munich. Von Munich. German born army officer who became a feud marshal in the Russian Empire actually. Downfall. So he seems, yeah, just, just a D tier. Nader Shah. Nader Shah. Is he another Safavid? Nader Shah. Known. So he's the founder of the Afsharid dynasty of Iran and one of the most powerful rulers in Iranian history. But he got assassinated in rebellion. But he fought numerous campaigns throughout the Middle East. And because of his military genius, some historians have described him as Napoleon of Persia. The Sword of Persia or the Second Alexander. Okay, so this guy seems like just basically the cooler version of. He's a cooler version of like the, the other Persian generals. Like he seems to have a lot of successful campaigns. Like he campaigned successfully against the. And it's pretty much everybody. Like he beat the Safavids, he overthrew them, he beat the Hataki, the Ottomans. He even beat the Mughals in India, so he was basically just fighting everyone and winning. But eventually, he got so buffed that he got assassinated, so we're putting him in the S here. Maurice of Saxe. Maurice of Saxe. Maurice de Saxe. His decisive victory at the battle. Ooh, okay. Pretty decisive victory during the wars of the Austrian succession. Put you in A tier. As time goes on, like more and more modern generals are becoming a very high tier. Ash Ashraf Hotak. What? So he's. Yeah, he didn't seem like he did much. He defeated the Ottomans. And he was like the ruler of the Hotak. Uh, I can't really put it, put him too high. I'm comparing them to some of the people on this list. Baji Rao the First. Baji Rao the First, 
of the Maratha Empire. He defeated the Mughals at Delhi. Okay. Baji Rao, I'll put you up here in B tier. Frederick the Great. Gotta put him in God tier. The one who united Prussia. Frederick. Frederick the Great. He was quite the figure. He's basically the, um, yeah. He fought the Seven Years' War and won it. And even Napoleon said, gentlemen, if this man were still alive, I would not be here. Like, even Napoleon respected this guy. This guy is God's here. Ernest Gideon von Laden. Hmm, we're putting him in the A tier. I don't have to really have a lot of time to like go and explain in the biographies of every single one of these generals. This is gonna take way too long, so we're just gonna have to keep keep going, pay attention. Hyder Ali. If I'm not sure who they are, I'm gonna have to look them up. But I'm not gonna explain the biography, it's taking way too long. This guy seems like just a E tier. This guy, I'm pretty sure I've heard of him before. I've heard his name. I'm putting him in E tier. Piotr. Put you in B. Okay, Suvorov. Alexander Suvorov. Now we're getting to the Alexander Suv Suvorov. He's basically the Napoleon of Russia, pretty much. Like, just leave it at that. I can't explain his entire life story. Because you can f go find out yourself. But we're putting Suvorov in the god tier. Hisin Byushin. Another Indian general. Put him in B tier. Quang Trung. Quang Trung. Pretty sure this guy's Vietnamese. Yeah. He's one of the most successful military commanders in Vietnam's history. So. Yeah. Seemed like he was a solid general. Like, most of these guys are B tier. Like, they're solid, but they're not, you know, at the all time great. Andre Messina. He's also a B tier general. Jean Moreau. A lot of these guys, some of these guys aren't even like actual, you know, generals, generals, but they're more like, you know, the colonels under some other generals. Pyotr Pigration. Radetzky von Raditz. Jean Lanz. Okay, now we're getting to Arthur Wellesley, Napoleon. Napoleon, Arthur Wellesley. They both go in the gods here, in terms of generals, because they won the most battles. Maybe after Subutai, they won the most battles. Napoleon, military genius, and Arthur Wellesley was the man who eventually brought him down. Arthur Wellesley, the first, aka the Duke of Wellington. I mean, some people say this guy is overrated, but... I, I actually think he's one of the greatest generals in history, but let's see, Louis Gabriel Suchet, put you in B tier. There's another Archduke, Archduke Charles, but there's a lot of people with that name, okay, we got the right one. So he's the son of. He was considered one of Napoleon's formidable opponents.
Yeah, we're putting him in the S tier. Archduke Charles in S tier. Winfield Scott. General Winfield Scott. Winfield Scott. We knew, I know who he, is, who he is, but we're going to have to put him in an A tier. He's very experienced. This is where we get into American history, where a lot of the time, like, the Americans are either going to be fighting each other or they're going to be fighting Native Americans. So it's like, going to be hard to judge, but in any case, he's an A tier general. Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu. One of the better African generals on this list. You put him in A tier. He's probably the highest ranked, but maybe other than maybe some of the, I don't know. Whatever. Ibrahim Pasha. He seems like he's just, just a D, D tier. Hari Singh Nwana, C tier. Alright, finally, we got to the modern ones. Helmuth von Mulkt. Put him in B. Duke of Kayaxis. He's also B. Yzep Garibaldi, B. Robert E. Lee is going in the... I kind of want to put him in either A or S tier. It's going to be kind of a difficult decision. I mean, I know Robert E. Lee was the reason why the Confederacy... He kind of carried the Confederacy on his... On his back. He won a lot of battles against the Union, I have to admit. But eventually, Ulysses S. Grant took command... Lee in the A tier. How about that? Lee is an A tier general. He's solid. Emir. Okay, this guy seems like it's just another. Yeah. Leonard Graf von Blukmint. Oh. William Tecumseh Sherman. He's the one that supported a total war policy against the Confederacy during the American Civil War, in which anybody fighting for the confederacy was an enemy so he would go and like attack villages and everything just to he attacked like everybody pretty much that's what total war is but it was actually it actually did work though so we'll put sherman up with a with lee ulysses grant i'll put him in s tier because he was the guy that eventually brought the confederacy down through his victories Stonewall Jackson, Stonewall, Stonewall Jackson, he fought alongside Robert E. Lee, but he's not, let's see, he ended up getting killed during battle, but He's actually a pretty good general, so I'm going to put him up in A tier with the boys. Now, Frederick Roberts. Now we're getting to the... Yeah, World War One is getting close. Frederick Roberts. Put him in B tier. Cal C -t B tier. Jovin Mystic. C tier. Eric Ludendorff is going to go up in S tier. Because of his famous victory against the Russians at Tannenberg. Like, that was a genius, genius battle in World War One. Like, that prevented the Russians from advancing right into Germany. Like, if 
this guy didn't win that battle, that would have been the end. But instead, that kind of was a wake-up call for Russia that it wasn't going to be easy for them. Uh, Harry, I can't even read that. John Menashe. Paul von Leto Vorbeck. Arthur Carey is going to go up in B tier. Ataturk is B tier. Tomoyuki Yamashata. So he was the general of the Imperial Japanese in World War II. And he was the one that conquered all that. Yeah. But eventually, when the Japanese lost, he got executed for war crimes. But he was a successful general, though, nevertheless. So we're putting him in A tier. Eric von Manstein. Eric. Seems like maybe a C tier general. Heinz Gudurian. Gudurian. Invasion of France. That's. Okay. He's an A tier general. William Slim. Of Australia. He's wounded in action several times, but he managed to keep on going. I'm putting this guy in the A tier. Then Erwin Rommel, we were gonna have to put the Desert Fox. Should, uh, Erwin Rommel, should I put him in S tier or God tier? I'm putting him in S tier. He's not the same metal as some of these guys in God tier, but he's still pretty high up there. If you made it to at least A tier, that's how you know that you are very significant in history. If you make it to A tier. Or at least military history. Georgi Zukov. We're going to put him in S tier as well. Successful general. Konstantin Romanovsky. Or Rokossovsky. A tier. Sun Li Zhen. Another Sun Li Zhen. He's nicknamed Ra the Erwin Rom of the East. Chinese Nationals General. But he did not have the confidence of Chiang Kai-shek. Seemed like a pretty, pretty good guy. Put him in A. And then Nikolai Vatutin. Red Army operations in Ukraine during Kursk. But he was ambushed by an, a Ukrainian insurgent army. Okay, kind of, that's kind of foreshadowing as to now, but whatever. Alright, so finally we're done with the generals tier list. That's not even all of the generals. There are, there are a lot more generals in history that were significant. They missed out a lot of them, but that would have been made for too, too much of a video. So coming into gods here, we have listed Cyrus the Great, Alexander the Great, Scipio, Afrikanis, Julius Caesar, Aurelian, Khalid Ibn al-Walid, Genghis Khan, Subutai, Timur, Skanderbeg, Beg, Takeda Shingen, Gustavus Aldolfus, Frederick II, Alexander Suvorov, Arthur Wesley, and Napoleon. And in S tier, we got Philip II, Bai Chi, Chandragupta, Hannibal Barca, 
Gaius Marius, Cornelius Sola, Trajan, Sao Sao, Zhao Yu, Samudra Gupta, Flavius, Aetius, Belisarius, Heraclius, Simeon the Great, Basil the Second, El Cid, Saladin, Richard the First, Jebe, Mi, Namoto no Yo, Shitsune, Baibars, Henry V, the Iron Duke of Alba, Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, Stanislaw Zol, I cannot pronounce that, Johann Serclays, Jean Carlo Chaud K. Witz, Maurice of Nassau, Stanislaw Vicomte, Jan III, or the Winged Hussars, we got Charles XII, I believe. Or Carlos Rex, Nader Shah, Archduke Charles, Ulysses S. Grant, Eric Linendorf, Erwin Rommel, and Georgi Zukov. And as for the rest, well, you can check them out yourself. Some of these guys aren't worth mentioning, because they were either side characters in other people's campaigns, or they just didn't do enough to get compared to some of the greats. So that's that. We finally finished. And I'm taking a break from tier lists for a while. I've done like three of them in a row now. Four of them actually. Four videos.